Hey guys, it's Damp. So as promised yesterday, I put on the YouTube channel that we were gonna do a video of some long dark content where I go through and break down some of the tips. So keep in mind that this is this actually the idea came from two two of my friends who had just gotten the game recently when it was free and they had a bunch of questions as they were trying to get their bearings and I'm like, well, I'll just make a video. So uh, hopefully these help you, even if you're an advanced player, I've got some stuff in here that I think may benefit you. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and go right into it and uh, hopefully these will help you guys. They really are catered for brand new players, but even if you're farther into the game, I think you'll be able to take away a few things. So. Um, here we go. So the first thing I want to talk about, and I talk about it in some of my playthroughs that are on the YouTube channel, is don't carry your calories. So what do I mean by that? So essentially what I mean is if you have planned your day, and ideally that's something you want to do each and every day as you're waking up and, and planning what you're going to do in the game, you want to go through and adjust your inventory accordingly. So if you're going out to just explore or loot, you probably don't need to bring a bunch of food. You don't need to bring a bunch of water. You can eat and drink before you leave. And barring that you don't run into some nasty blizzard, you're going to kind of know the way to get back home most of the time. You're going to take short trips out just to explore. You don't need a lot of food. Now, when you're moving from zone to zone, you're going to carry a lot more because you don't necessarily know what you're going to run into or where you're going maybe. Um, maybe you're not using the map in your playthrough. So adjust accordingly. By carrying your calories, I mean, you can see this is just... This is hardly anything that I have on me here. There's no meat or no protein. Really, it's a lot of lighter food and just some cans, and we got a rabbit. Um, so looking through here, even only having 0.22 gallons of water, it's at two pounds. I have 10 pounds of my inventory that's just dedicated to food. So put the food down before you go out and explore. You'll be able to walk faster, which we'll talk about later. And uh, the, the other thing I want to talk about is this is something I was telling one of my friends is, is he was carrying meat and just walking by wolves like he was going to pet him. I'm like, dude, don't carry your meat, you muppet. So don't carry meat if you absolutely don't have to. Obviously, if you're harvesting it, you're bringing it back, you need to. But do everything you can to not carry meat. Don't carry the guts. Let the guts and the hide cure on the floors as soon as you get inside. But you really shouldn't be bringing meat. It should be a last resort. That's something you really want to carry with you as a last resort if you're moving from zone to zone because it does put a big target on your back when it comes to the wolves and interacting with them. So kind of what I touched on previously, the next one I want to get into is talking about your everyday carry or your EDC. So this is something that's commonly talked about in the prepper community, but essentially there are things in my inventory right now and I just picked a random playthrough because um, I was going through just to look for content and like obviously I'm not bringing the driving gloves I don't need to bring these um, you aren't gonna want to bring any extra clothing that is gonna be super heavy and if you're gonna do all your breakdown and your repair when you're at your base camp or, or harvesting wherever that may be don't bring books Try not to bring fire starting materials if you can help it, unless you're going to be outside targeting that type of, um, maybe you need to go thaw a corpse to harvest, uh, something like that. But realistically, the biggest issue I see that a lot of the newer players have is they want to bring everything with them. You don't have to bring everything with you. Plan your day accordingly and bring whatever you may need as you go out exploring. So he said, one of the questions he, he threw at me was, Hey, what are the tools I absolutely need to bring? I would say if you're going out exploring, the pry bar is something that I don't leave home without. Um, if you're going out harvesting wood, obviously you need the hatchet, but you probably don't need the hatchet if you're not going out to get wood. Um, you can leave it. I mean, that's three pounds you can save right there. Uh, the cooking pot, again, you don't need to bring this with you if you're not going outside to cook food or you aren't going on an extended mission of some sort. So there's a lot of stuff that if you just go through this, you're like, well, I'm not going to need this, I'm not going to need this, I'm not going to need this, and it will cut down your weight considerably, and we'll talk about what that does later. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, your cooking skill. First, I guess second of all, we'll go into that. But first of all, cooking tea and coffee and the berries and the mushrooms allow you to gain cooking skill very quickly, which we'll talk about. But also, these are lighter to carry than the water. On top of that, these are going to give you an added fatigue bonus, and if you choose to warm them up, 
you'll get a warmth bonus as well. So it's a no-brainer to cook these when you get them, especially if you're working on leveling your cooking skill. I personally, in this playthrough, I'm on like day 25, so just saving them towards a little later when I thought I might need them. I personally uh, prefer to leave the coffee and bring those on trips that I'm moving to a different zone or moving the base camp to another zone or going you know, out on an extended exploration or recon trip, things like that is when I bring the coffee. And I pretty much bring the tea uh, to drink right before I go to bed if I absolutely have to um, because I did, it does help you get well-rested bonuses as you can see here. Um, but these are lighter to bring than water. Again, I don't think you need to bring water with you. I don't think that's a necessity. If you're going out for short trips here or there just to go out exploring, like you're headed from, uh, you're headed to the dam from the Mystery Lake uh, office, the camp office, you know you're going to find some loot there. So you don't need to bring everything. You're going to find cans of uh, soda there or what have you. So you really don't need to be as concerned with those. So as we talk, the other part is about the cooking skills. So as you look at um, your skill menu, sorry. let me just go into, I'll just go into here. So as we look at cooking, so this guy has a level three and you can see the added bonus, the, the added bonuses that he gets. So plus 15% calories, no calorie loss if you don't have uh, a can opener, which again, that means you don't have to leave them. You're, you can leave those can openers at home. It's more weight you don't have to carry and your cooking times are reduced by 10%. So as you go through and spam some of these uh, coffees and teas that you're going to come across, you are going to gain cooking skill very quickly. Another thing to consider as we talk about this is if you start a fire, so let me see if I have, I'll kind of give you guys an idea. I'll go downstairs. I think there's a stove right here. So if we start a fire here, if we drop, let's just say we drop uh do I have canned goods? Yeah, we'll drop this one. So see how this says cold on the pork and beans and the bang of dog food doesn't say anything? It's because you can't heat this. So this says cold. If you drop this right in this location and you had all these locations here full, this is still going to get warm. And it used to still give cooking skill. I don't know if it does or not after the update. Just FYI, don't quote me on that. But I think it still does give cooking skill just from warming it up that way. So... Keep that in mind, even if all these are occupied and you really want to spam water with a bunch of cans up here, or maybe food, I don't know, um, you can still warm up your food here and it'll still give you the cooking skill and it'll warm up your food. So that also is a really good tip when you're cooking by the fire and you only have two cooking slots, you can put the cans right next to the fire and it'll do the same thing. Um, so as we go into the next one, using a torch to light fires rather than using matches directly. So what do I mean by that? So when you go in here to start your fire, if you have a torch, you can light the torch and the torch will come up here instead of your matches. So what does that mean? That means if you fail trying to start a fire, you aren't spamming matches because your torch is basically has a percentage and you'll just use those percentages of the torches rather than spamming match after match. So you are guaranteed one match pretty much to getting a fire started anywhere. That saves you a ton of matches. Um, over the course of your playthrough. So you should really always be carrying a torch and we'll talk about that a little bit later too. Going back to talking about crafting. So as we look at crafting and we kind of go through and we say, uh, let's say I wanted to make arrow shafts and I'm gonna make arrows. One of the benefits of making arrows is that if you make arrows, it gives you skill ups in archery. So you can tell I haven't done a lot of archery on this playthrough. This is just from reading books. I don't even have a bow. Um, but what also happens is if you make arrows, it increases the skill. So you don't have to fire your bow, and you'll be able to get that archery skill. Again, that was fairly dated, but I'm pretty sure it still works. We were actually testing it today, and we didn't get through it. So, um, But I'm going to say, go, I'm gonna go ahead and say that it probably does work. Moving on to the next one, store your meat outside. So this is pretty basic and pretty simple. Uh, if you store your meat outside, you can put it right on your porch. You can put it just outside the porch. You can put it anywhere outside. It's going to reduce the slowdown. And really, you don't have to worry about the wolves coming and taking them or attracting bears or any predators. So as you can see, I've got all my wolf meat right here. So that's pretty much where I'm storing most of my stuff. Is going to be right on the porch, right next to the door, so it's easy for me to go in and out, and I don't have to worry about losing it in the grass or in the snow. It's going to be right outside to the right-hand side of the door. 
Next one, when we talk about fire starting, this is another thing that um, my friend was like, oh, well, you know, I started a fire, it's, and he, he would sit there and basically waste it, and it was triggering me. Well, the reason that it was triggering me is because fire is so important, especially on the higher difficulty levels. Matches are so worth, are, are so valuable, you don't want to waste them. So anytime you start a fire, you should be using every minute of that fire as you can. Wood is valuable in that it takes a lot of energy, which takes a lot of food, to get that wood into the stove or onto your fireplace. So any second that you have, if you have six slots here and you've got six cans, I'm using six cans. Um, like I was saying before, warm up your food or your coffee right in front of here, even if you've already cooked it. But do not waste the fire. Always be doing water at the very minimal um, cook your tea, cook your coffee, cook your food, whatever it might be, but don't waste your fire. The wood's too valuable, and as you start to look into um, water, it becomes really, really important. Early on, if you're a new player, if you happen to get a few days of blizzards like we're having now where you can't travel, or you're going to go out there and you're going to get lost, so keep that in mind. Don't waste a second of your fire if you can help it. Um... Saving all your guts and hides is also important, and most of you higher level players, this isn't really for you, but my friend had hunted a few rabbits, and the wolves were all over him. And he kept dropping the wolves, or the, the rabbits, or their guts, as just to get the wolves away from him. And I was trying to explain to him how valuable it is when you have um, hides and what they do. And the next tip kind of stems into this. The reason that he didn't know is, as a newer player, he had not explored the crafting menu. So if, if you're new to the game, I highly encourage you to go into the crafting menu and kind of get an idea on what you have as far as what you can make. Um, like this birch bark, you can make a tea out of that birch bark. Um, scrap metal is used to make hooks and fishing tackle, which can be very, very important early game. The guts are used to make the line for the fishing tackle. There's so many things in here that when I showed it to him, he was like, oh man, I had no idea that that was in there. I've been throwing this away or that away or, or another thing. So he made sure to tell me to tell you guys that that's something that I should mention. So there you go. Um, another thing that he, he was struggling to find cloth and he just didn't know. He had never really looked at the windows, but you can harvest these curtains. And keep in mind, another thing I'll talk about as a tip that I talk about my playthrough is if you're really wanting to do a long-term playthrough, use your hands, don't use the knife. If those six minutes aren't going to matter to you or those 20 calories, it's going to save your knife long-term, which does tend to be valuable, especially on the higher difficulties. But he didn't know that you could get cloth from curtains. And he was struggling to repair his gear. He couldn't find cloth anywhere. So keep in mind that you can get cloth from curtains. You can get them from towels. You'll see them hanging over uh, like rugs or banisters, like right here, this cloth here. Um, there's some towels, so keep in mind that you can find them in other places. You can't really take them from beds, which I'm kind of confused on. Uh, there are some circumstances where you can get them from pillows, and you can even, if you break down chairs that have uh, covers on them, you can take the cloth there from the couches. All those places are, are, are all good resources for it. Uh, so we talked about torches a little bit earlier, but another thing I want to talk about torches and, and one of their benefits is that I believe, and, and don't quote me on the number, but I believe by having a torch in your inventory on your person lit. So let's say I'm carrying my torch in my hand right now and I don't have one or I'd show you guys. Um, by having that torch lit in your hand, I believe the number is you get a 4 degree Fahrenheit bonus to heat. Also, it, it acts as a flare in that it can scare off wolves. So... If you are struggling to find clothing, a building, and you really, you know, you're doing everything you can to try and move on to a new place, it's cold, you don't have clothing, you're new in the game, if you do have a torch, it does help. So if you're struggling, if you've looted somewhere, there's nowhere else to go, you know you've got to move on because you have no resources, take a torch with you, keep it lit. And the other thing is, warm up this food, uh, whether you have, you know, tea or coffee or something, and it, that actually used to give you a benefit as well. Just by carrying the warm food on your person, you used to get a couple degree benefit. I don't know if that still works, but it, it used to work. So, again, I know the torch thing works because I was just using it yesterday. But when it comes to the food, 
I'm not exactly sure how much it gives, but I think it used to give about four degrees per. So in desperate times, you can use that. So as we move on to the next couple things, as you're planning your day, we talked about this earlier, what you want to do is you, you want to look in here on your, essentially your clock, for lack of a better term, and you really want to plan, plan your days to travel between here and probably sunset. Don't go out in the early morning, it's typically super cold. When it, when it comes to this, this sun beacon, you really want it to be right about here, which I would envision it to be somewhere between 9.30 and 10 o'clock in the morning at the earliest when you get out and move. And sometimes for me, I'm back inside by, I'm going to say this is probably 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock since this is Canada. So by 3.30 in the afternoon, I might be ready to go back. It just depends on what the weather looks like. And since we're looking at the weather, and obviously there's a blizzard outside, keep your books inside. That's when you're going to read them. Use your repair time for your clothes. Save it for a blizzard day if you can help it. Be as productive as you can because every day, whether you like it or not, you're burning calories. It's going to take more calories to go out and find that food. So plan your day accordingly when it comes to your blizzard days. You're going to get them. You're going to be stuck inside. So keep some books just for that. Obviously, you don't want to waste any fire. So you could use your fire source as a light to read books, but then it's harder to manage what's on the stove. So I tend to save my clothing repair and my book reading for the days where it's an absolute blizzard or if you wake up in the middle of the night and you have the you know electrical storms so another thing to talk about so you're at night you wake up in the middle of the night and you go oh my god my guy's well rested he's not gonna do anything I'll just sit in here and pass time right well that's not the right thing to do the reason is you're still burning calories so when it comes to time management the only time I'm gonna recommend that you do this is and this is going to be, I'm sure people are going to bust my balls about it. It's only if, only if you're really, really cold, it's early or late in the game, you don't have a lot of resources, and you're just trying to warm up. That's the only time I recommend that you use pastime. That's it. Because there's so many other things you could be doing. Like, for example, I could be breaking down this cloth in the middle of the night. It would still work. I could be pulling down these curtains in the middle of the night. Need some and then you'll say, well, damn, I can't see shit. I don't have a storm lantern. I don't have this. I don't have that. Well, if you have the spray paint, one of the things you can do with the spray paint is spray paint it on the floor so it can help you navigate as you're moving or trying to uh, go about the place in the complete darkness. So one of the things I'll do if it's not blowing a gale outside like it is now is I'll walk outside and do all this stuff outside because I'm only going to be out there for a few minutes, walk back inside, and then do it if I don't need any light. A lot of times when you walk outside in the middle of the night, there's more light there than it is inside. So again, plan accordingly. You're burning calories constantly, so try and be productive with that time frame. So we talked a little bit about torches earlier really I really want to stress how important they are I tend to carry two to four on me at all times sometimes more sometimes less it just depends but they're a heat source in the open it's saving you a bunch of matches you can break down your ruined torches into sticks for tinder um, and do keep in mind when you do pull a torch out of the fireplace so for those of you who don't know how to get a torch you start a fire when you start that fire um, depending on the amount of fire that you're starting, uh, you're going to get a fire duration. So if you pull a torch out of the fire, which it comes up right here when you click stove, but instead of this, there's an option to take a torch once you have a lit. Um, once you have a fire lit, it'll say take torch here. But you're going to subtract 10 minutes from that fire. So keep that. Just keep that in mind. So we move into the next couple things. So. We talked earlier about why I don't like to carry a lot of items on me when I'm going out and exploring, especially when I know the map and I know what I'm going to do. When you are lighter, you're going to move so much faster. So my friend was really surprised with the amount of weight that he saved or the amount of time that he saved when he was out in the open and he wasn't over cucumbered. So by being over encumbered, what essentially happens is that your person is going to get tired quicker. On top of that, you're going to move slower. So when it comes to avoiding predators like wolves or whatever it might be, you're going to move slower, which makes you, again, an easier target. So you really don't want to do that if you can help it. Try and travel lighter. You're going to cover more ground. You're going to lose less energy. You're going to move faster to avoid those predators. Um, another thing that I got asked by him, 
was, uh, you know, how do you get these? How do you get these rabbits? It's so hard for me to hit them with stones. So, unfortunately, on this playthrough, I don't have a stone in my inventory. I probably should have went and grabbed one. But when you use your, um, when you throw your stones, your thumb on your left hand comes up as an indicator. You want to use that thumb as a crosshair and just aim slightly above it, like maybe an eighth of an inch. If you can aim just slightly above it and you want to try and angle your throw down where possible, if you're throwing downhill, for example, you may want to throw a little lower. If you're throwing uphill, throw a little higher. But just use that thumb as an indicator. It, it made it a lot easier for him to hit the rabbits. Um, he asked me about one of the best foods he should take when he was moving into another zone. And I told him cattails are probably one of the most OP foods in the game when it comes to traveling. They're super light. You get about, I think it's 150 calories from them. They're easy to find as you're on the move, especially when you're going through, uh, going through those zones and you're looking at um, uh, anywhere near water. Usually they're fairly easy to find. On top of that, when you're gathering them, you're getting tinder. So uh, that is what I think is the best travel food. But anything light is what you want to bring. The jerky, the, the bars... Any of those, if you're moving zones, you want to eat the canned stuff where you can. Um, okay, so another one that comes up quite often, and I'll walk up here and give you guys an example, that he was missing a lot that I saw, and it's just it, this just comes with experience, but as you go through rooms, you're going to see things that are back in corners sometimes. Look back in your corners. The game has a lot of treasures back there that get hidden. For example, right here's one. There's some rifle ammo right here. If you're breaking down boxes and crates behind like staircases and in corners, you'll often find a lot of items back there. Like there's a place in Forlorn right next to the forge. If you break down the boxes and to the left of the uh, uh, forge, there should be some crates inside there. Break down those crates. I think there's usually canned food that spawns in there and there's a safe that's in there. So break down crates and boxes there if you're going to waste the time. Um, or waste the energy to, to break down crates if you absolutely need them. But be looking in the corners. Usually there's look behind buildings. Sometimes there's rifle spawns back there. So with all that, guys, that's everything I had. I tried to go as quickly as possible. And I know I didn't have some video of some of the examples, so I hope you're able to envision it. Um, drop down in the comments for me anything you have that you think would help new players, something that maybe helped you. Um, since it is Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas, everybody, if you do celebrate. And I hope to be coming out with some new content for you soon. Um, just FYI, if you're watching this and you tend to watch my channel, I got a copyright claim on Darkest Dungeon. That's why I have not posted any of that content. They're working on ironing that out. Uh, the copyright claim came from the music that was actually in the game, from footage that I was recording in the game. So they're working on it. Um, so until that happens, I can't release any content. But with that, thanks everybody for watching. I apologize for the slow updates. I promise I'm working on more. It's just been a crazy year with everything that's gone on. So thanks for the support. Um, have a good Christmas if you celebrate, and I'll see you next time.